Hello everyone, it's Mike here. Hope you're doing well. Um, the original release of today's video featured a company who don't meet the high standards of Sorted nor you, our community. But unfortunately, we weren't aware of this until you guys pointed it out. So this is just a quick video to say, number one, thank you so much for those of you who got in touch and let us know. And number two, we're really sorry we dropped the ball on this one. Um, we all ensure that it doesn't happen again. Um, so thanks so much for sticking with us. We've recut the video. This is it. We hope you enjoy it. And thanks again. Hello and welcome to Sorted Food. Now today we have four trends and two normals sat in our hot seat and we're going to embark on a bit of a journey to explore what makes them trendy, why they're popular and whether we might use them at home. Are you ready? I am ready. Lift the cloche from number one. Careful. Ooh. Ooh. What the hell is that? This is king of oh, kefir. You sighed. Why did you sigh? Because I've had kefir before, and it was minging. <laughs> and is that because it was slightly soured dairy? Oh. Well, it was yours, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have made some, yes. But I, I forgot that. I forgot. I wasn't really tasting it. I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but that was dairy-based kefir. This is kefir water. This is Water Kefir by King of Kefir. And they are Ireland and Europe's first dedicated water kefir brewery using traditional water kefir grains. Two different flavours, cucumber, mint and thyme, and chilli and ginger. Nice. Kefir grains basically consume, you're right, the sugar in uh, dairy, lactose. However, these are slightly different kefir grains. It's water kefir, and therefore they eat, digest, the other sugars, so natural sugars from fruit, and therefore you can make fruit-based, and I think this one started as apple juice, kefir. Same process, it's eating the sugars and turning it into acid. A bit like kombucha. A bit like kombucha, but instead of a scoby, grains. Okay. So I think the logic behind it is it is a soft drink that is low in sugar. Um, very low in calories, so we're talking single digit calories per bottle, uh, but has all the same goodness and the effervescence and the deliciousness that you want from something. That is really refreshing. There's a big hit of ginger and you're left with the warmth of chilli rather than the flavour necessarily of, of chilli, but it's not slap you in the face, spicy or anything. From kefir, I, I was expecting a, a tang to it. And are you getting any of that sort of sour flavour sort of attributed to this type of drink? Not as much as I get from kombucha. Interesting. So it's sweeter, it tastes sweeter and is far easier to drink. So more akin to a, a maybe an artisanal lemonade or soft drink. Yeah, like a, a health food version of a lemonade. Nice. I think they're both really delicious, refreshing drinks. And if the kefir is doing something great to my gut biome, then that is all round a top effort. You're liking it? I, I'm really liking this. I could see myself, myself buying a few bottles of this. That's, 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 a, that's a game changer. Subject to price, of course. Oh, yeah. How much per bottle? That's a 330 mil bottle. I'm going to say £4 a bottle. £3.50. Pretty, pretty good. £3.33 on the basis of three for a tenner. Yeah, I'm right with that. I'm right with that. So you like it? I like it. Do you think it's a trend? I think it's a trend. Ask him the question then, Ebers. A tasty bubble or not worth the trouble? <laughs> that is a tasty bubble. That is an outrageous success. That's a healthy bubble. May I? Give it a lift. I like it when you give me undistinguishable meat. What is this? Have a smell, have a taste. They smell a lot like sausage. So the spicing? Yes. That is four very tasty pieces of meat. It's got kind of a, a roast dinner type of feel with flavours, like slightly burnt carrots with turkey stuffing and a spiced meatball. It feels like it's trying to be meaty. However, none of them are original versions of those meats. And what I can't work out is whether they are a different 
animals meat in place of where I'd expect it to be, or whether it's a vegan alternative. Well, Jay, we sourced all of these from a vegan butcher. Rudy's is based in London and it is an all vegan diner and butcher and they specialise in taking American classics and turning them vegan. And in front of you you have their sausage, pastrami, bacon and meatball. I'm going to need some help with the term vegan butcher because mm. that sounds like an oxymoron to me. They have a butcher shop and diner in North London. And I tell you the hell we went through to try and get these products because they sell out like that, which in itself just says what a humongous trend this continues to be and how popular these particular products have been. Question is, how do they hold up when added to dishes? You're gonna have a good day. Spaff, in front of you, you have a meatball sub a breakfast muffin and a Reuben sandwich. That's incredible. Yeah, now this looks better. This, I, I'm much better. I'm with you now. I'm, the diner thing now makes sense. Do they taste amazing? That's the question that we have. I'll start with the meatball sub. Very deliberately, we have chosen three sandwiches that are typically quite meat heavy and or cheese heavy. However, obviously no animal products in any of these. That is a stonking sandwich. <laughs> I wouldn't be disappointed if that was served to me rather than a meat meatball. <laughs> Try the next one. Breakfast muffin. Is that black pudding? Black pudding. Sausage patty and bacon, I think. It's got it all in there. The bacon is made with cannellini bean, wheat gluten or Satan, beetroot, coconut oil, nutritional yeast. The list goes on. The black pudding, the same, but with kidney beans. The sausage patty in there is mostly soy based. We're talking soy protein. With processed meats like sausages, black puddings, bacons, things like that, they have so many spices and flavourings added to them. I can see how that can be replicated through spices and that kind of thing. Yeah. Fine, I get that. But these go the extra mile with texture. Mm. And I've not really had that with meat replacements before. It's the texture where you always can kind of tell something's slightly off with what your expectations might be. The best thing about a meat-based sandwich is the, the fatty, meaty juices. And if you look at my napkin, the only thing that's dripped is the sauce. There's nothing wrong in that. It's all delicious, it's absolutely perfect. It's just not meat. The only added fats come from the likes of coconut oil, palm oil, vegetable oils. Okay, right, like Reuben. Typically all the flavours you would expect, but with their pastrami, and the pastrami is made from red kidney beans and Satan, and a whole bunch of other things. Probably worth saying when I say a whole bunch of other things, the list of ingredients is extensive. We're talking 20 plus ingredients and therefore heavily or ultra processed for sure. But most of it is vegetable protein in the form of legumes, beans, chickpeas, Satan, cashew nuts, soy, that kind of stuff. It's very fibrous. It kind of pulls really nicely and it has like almost those kind of fatty air bubbles you get from pastrami on their own, I think is where they really stand out because you can tell that they're decent. And the fact that I was sitting there trying to work out, are they vegan, are they just a different animal, is a real telltale sign that that is a massive advancement. I'm quite blown away. Now, we are obviously not saying check out veganism, it's a future trend, everyone. But what we are doing is looking at the evolution of vegan products and just how incredible they're getting. If they start getting that good and you don't feel like you're missing out on the meat element, which was always something for me, then why wouldn't I buy that? We're going to talk price and we're going to isolate two of these products. You've got the bacon and the pastrami. They're both actually the same price, but how much do you think per packet they cost? Yeah, four pounds. Three pound fifty. Three pound fifty. Bang on. Whoa! Which is a hundred grams. So as a direct comparison, kilo for kilo, it's about twice as expensive as a higher end supermarket smoked bacon. I'm not gonna switch to a, a vegan diet. I'm not expecting to up my weekly budget by that much. These for me be, will be a, a fun alternative. Um, so I, I, I can justify that cost. So the question is, is this a meat-free marvel or is there mushroom for improvement? <laughs> there are no mushrooms in any of this. <laughs> but it's purely for weak. the pun. That was weak. That one, a meat-free marvel. Yeah, it's a meat-free marvel. I'm changing. 
Is this what growing feels like? And talking of growing and improvement, we are in fact going to set you a little challenge around the alternative meat market in battle form. So clock it, log it, digest it, and plan. Send me your vegan brisket recipes. Comment down below. Last but not least. Ice cream. Ice cream makes me happy, Ben. I'm a simple man with simple pleasures. I think it makes us all happy, those of us who can enjoy I, can it. I just, yeah, so you can tell us what, what flavours you've got. Both of them have been made on site. Mmm, well, that's very tasty. Chocolate caramel ice cream. It's delicious. It's pappy. Okay. Pappy. Strange texture to it. Try the other, see if it helps you out. That one's just peanut. That's just peanut butter. Correct. Peanut butter flavoured. There's something with the texture. Different from normal ice cream. It feels more cookie dough. If we were to tell you that this is vegan ice cream, would that surprise you? And if you think that we've had to substitute the dairy out of it for something else, could you take a guess at what that was? I have a lot of butter beans at home. And it's almost like mushed up butter beans. You pretty much hit the nail on the head. It is a legume in the form of a chickpea. So, Ooh, yeah, okay. we're looking at the rise of chickpeas in so many things. We've seen chickpeas baked as snacks. We've seen hummus crisps. We've seen aquafaba used as an egg white replacement in meringues and in cocktails. This is something we've seen pop up, chickpea ice cream. We couldn't actually get hold of any, so we made some. Like, there is a difference in texture. It's not melting in the same way that a normal ice cream would melt and you get the lovely bit of cream in the bottom and you, you're not getting that from the experience. But it tastes and does feel on the surface like ice cream. The association of vegan food with health, I don't think is in itself healthy. And if you look at some of the examples we had recently, we did vegan fish and chips with banana blossom, we did vegan KFC burger um, with Satan and beans. You know, these are fast foods and fried foods. These are just vegan alternatives. We need to be able to move away from vegan meaning healthy. If I want a scoop or four of ice cream, <laughs> I'm not expecting it to be good for me and healthy. I want it to be delicious and fulfill that luxurious need that I have within me for ice cream. I don't need that to be made with cow's milk. Like they That's it, isn't it? And you know, that's, that's the difference. It's not about health or not health. It's about whether you're following a vegan diet, whether you are lactose intolerant. There are so many different elements to cover that aren't health-based. Now the food team have made the chickpea ice cream in front of you. Because we aren't able to source chickpea ice cream products in the UK, you can get them globally. So there's no price point to talk about here. But I will ask you the question, oh. is this the year of the chickpea or not your cup of tea? I really like it. It's the year of the chickpea. I love this product. I love chickpeas. Is this the year of the chickpea? No. That's a silly statement. It's always been the year of the chickpea, and it forever will be. Well, over to you guys. Do you see any of these as future food trends for 2021? And as always, let us know if there are other things that you can see in your crystal ball that are ahead of us. Join in the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag Sorted Food Trends, and let us know. Mike happy? Yeah, I'm just going over the big words again. <laughs> What's your name, Barry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>